Hey everyone, James here again from Western Welding Academy. Today we are going to go over, hands down, the most common demo that I do here at the school. Just your basic, simple open root plate joint. Had some issues with this during our weld comp. A lot of young people struggling when they came here and, uh, and that bothered me. So today I want to make this video for you guys to show you how it's done, all right? All right, so the first thing we're going to do to get started, we're going to put lands on our, on our knife edges here. If you see here, when you get your coupon, it should have a bevel cut on it and it'll be a sharp knife edge. We're just going to flat this off right here. Well, since I'm right here at it, another common thing, the biggest disqualifier at our weld comp, double eye protection. Okay, so we're using our eighth inch grinding disc because that's what we got here in the shop. You can also use a quarter inch. It's going to do the same thing for you on this. Keep in mind here, you don't want to roll this up. You don't want to roll this down. You want to stay as 90 degrees to your plate as you can, right? You want to flat land on this right here. And we're going to go to about an eighth of an inch, all right? So double eye protection, and we're going to take this down to about an eighth of an inch. Okay, now we've started putting this land on, but you got to take note, it's very important that there's going to be a burr on the back of this. So before we measure this to see if it's an eighth or not, that burr has got to come off, okay? So gently, we're going to run it off here. And you're looking for nice, smooth on the backside, okay? Here at Western Welding Academy, when we give out 6010s, they're eighth inch 6010s, okay? Not all 6010s are eighth inch, all right? So just make sure of what you're using when you're, when you're doing your measuring here. So we're gonna take our eighth inch rod and we're gonna measure our land here. And we actually got a little heavier than I wanna be. And that's okay, we'll make that work. So we got our land on our first plate. Now we're gonna put our land on our second plate because that's what we're doing here today. We're putting two pieces of plate together, right? Looking pretty good. Then we got a little fat spot kind of here in the center. That's all right, we're gonna work that out, no big deal. So now we have our land zone, we're gonna work on fit up. We're just gonna take us a piece of flat bar and that's what we're gonna use to line our plates up on. Just like so. So we got our eighth inch land on. For our spacer, we're gonna use a 332 spacer gap. So I got an eighth inch land, I wanna put a 332 spacer on here, okay? So we knock our flux off our rod. We're gonna bend this guy in a V, all right? And then we're gonna fit that puppy right in here. Our other piece of plate is gonna butt right up to it just like this, giving us a 332 root gap, okay? So eighth inch land, 332 root gap, all right? Get that fit up there nice. Throw a clamp on here. Now, I know, bare hands. But you gotta feel that hollow on the backside. You want it to be nice and flat. If those plates aren't set nice and flat, you need to revamp and figure out what's causing them to be out of whack and get them fixed so that they lay perfectly flat, okay? All right, now we come over to our lovely ESOB machine. We're gonna fire this puppy up. Now what I keep in my head for polarity for TIG and stick is I, I don't put the reverse or straight polarity in my head. All I keep in my brain, because I'm, I'm a little bit feeble, is stick, electrode positive, TIG, electrode negative. I keep that in there. It's always worked. It never lets me down, okay? So you notice on this one, we go from the positive side to the electrode stinger over here, okay? We're going to set her to 6010 here. We're going to start this thing off at about 90 amps and uh, see how she goes. So now we got our machine fired up. We've got our lens on. We've got our root gap set. We're going to put a tack in this thing. I'm going to weld this joint from this side back towards myself this way. So I'm going to put my first tack over here and I'm going to make it a smaller tack. And I'll show you why I'm making it smaller here just in a second. So we put our small tack in there. I'm gonna take my spacer wire out now. I'm gonna take my backing plate out. Don't need that anymore, everything's lined up good. Now the purpose of the small tack over there is I can adjust things. If my high low is out a little bit, I can bend this around. If my gap needs tightened up or loosened up, I can move it. We're pretty good here. A little loose in the center, kind of tied out on the outside edges. We may have a little bow in our plate. That's okay, I think we're gonna be close enough to make it work. So now I'm gonna put my second tack in and I'm gonna make that second tack a little bit longer. All right, now you can see here, 
I've got a small tack on my startup side and I've got about an inch on my finishing side. And the purpose of that is I'm gonna fire up over here and as I'm welding across, if I have a small weak tack over here and I've ground it thin, it can crush or break and move. It won't be so prevalent when you're learning plate, but when you get on pipe, this is gonna be a big deal for you. You need to have good solid tacks in there to hold your fit keep it from crushing or moving or anything else. We got our lands, we got our gap, we got everything set, it's fit up, tacked up. Now we're gonna prep these tacks to put the root in. So I'm a little different than some of the other instructors we have here. I like to use the cutoff wheel for what I'm about to do here now. We're gonna grind these tacks, the edges, where we're coming off of and into the tacks. We want that to be very, very thin. The purpose of that is when I fire up here, I wanna burn through that tack. And when I get over here to the other side, finishing side, I want to burn through the tack as I come up onto it. That's going to tie everything together and make one, if, we, if I do it right, it's going to make one nice, clean, solid root all the way down through there. We got these grounds and the, hopefully this is all done right we're going to burn through this and then we're going to burn through this right here so you've got your perfect bevels you've got your land exactly how you want it if you put a great big fat rock on there it's very easy to alter your land to alter your bevels all we want to do is just grind right here where we're going to try to affect that okay and then it's time to put a root in and burn through that pack put a little pressure on those lands Watch that keyhole fall right along behind me there. Both sides, want to watch both sides burning off. Coming up to the finishing keyhole. I'm going to have to step it a little bit to get it to close up. And we're burning through the finish track, so that's good. Right off the end. We got our root in. Let's see how it looks. purposes here. I'm going to flip her over so you can see it. Little skinny spots but the walls are broke down. There's nothing under flush so we're going to rock and roll with it. So we got our root in. Now we're going to put our hot pass in. All right. I'm going to fire up off the end of this plate right here and get the rod burning. And I'm going to bring it in and get a puddle started. And I'm not really weaving, and I'm just going to widen this out a little bit. I want to tie into the sides. I want this bead to lay flat, okay? If I just widen it out a little bit and I hit it with my wire wheel, and it'll come out nice and clean, okay? That's what we're looking for. If you lay this bead in here and it's kind of, it's, it's rolled over a little bit, you're going to trap slag in the sides and it's going to give you a problem, okay? bump with the wire wheel. I was not able to finish this in one rod, so I stopped about an inch early to give myself a little bit of room to work with. Instead of running that rod all the way down, trying to stretch it, stop a little bit short and give yourself some room to work with, get a fresh rod and restart, okay? I just want you guys to see how this is laying flat. There's no slag trapped in the sides, okay? Another important thing on a plate test I wanna show you guys, when you're running this rod down through here, you're traveling along, traveling along, you get to the end right here, okay? You need to come off just a bit, push back in and pause and hold every pass, okay? You'll see it swell up and fill up and then snap it out, okay? If you just run off the end, it's very common, I see it all the time, if you just run off the end, you're gonna get a dished out spot in the end of this plate. On 3 8 plate like this, it's not a big deal, but when you're taking a one inch test, that's gonna cut out very big in the end right here, and then you're gonna fail that test, all right? So we've now got our root, our hot pass in, we're gonna start filling this joint up, okay? What I'm going to do here now, same thing, fire up out here off the end. I'm going to put the center line of my rod 
on the edge of my hot pass. Either edge, you can start on either side, but I'm gonna come down one side for one pass, then I'm gonna stack another one in on the other side of it right here. And what I'm looking for as this comes down through here is I want my weld puddle to come right to this bevel edge right here without burning the bevel off. That's what I'm shooting for, okay? So you see right here, we've got one fill pass in. We brought it just to the bevel edge on this one side. So the next one, the center line of my rod, I'm gonna lay it right on the edge of that weld I just laid, bring it right up, and I'm watching the same thing on this side now. I wanna watch my puddle just come to that bevel edge, but not burn it off, okay? We wanna fill this joint up and still have those bevel edges there. The bevel edges just allow us to stay straight, and it means that our joint is as narrow as it can possibly be, all right? Hold that end again, break out. Okay, so we got our root, our hot pass, and our fill passes in. If you can see here now, we've still got our bevel edges on here. We're all the way right at flush. Now we're gonna put a cap on. What we're looking for for the cap, and I'm gonna start on this side here, and as I come up, I'm barely gonna let that puddle barely take my bevel edge off, okay? I'm watching for undercut and I'm watching that I'm consuming that bevel edge. That's what I'm gonna be looking for. We wanna keep this particular bead as far that way as we can, okay? The further that way the first bead goes, the less work the second bead has to do, all right? That end right there, break off. All right, now we're starting to put the cap on. We got one half the cap on, right? So the next one, the center line of my rod down the bead that I just made. The most important thing right here is to keep these beads stacked up 50%. 50% of the bead that you're putting down on top of the last bead you put down. Does not matter if you make it to the other bevel or not. You can, you can put another bead on to get to the other side. This is another very common thing I see. I see the students, they try to stretch out and get to the bevel on the other side, then you get a valley between the two beads and then you've got a real problem on your hands, okay? So hopefully this will be our last pass. We're not gonna stretch it to try to reach the other bevel edge. We're gonna put this one on and I think we'll probably make it. If not, we'll put the last pass on. Okay guys, so this has been your prep, fit up, and procedure to weld out an open root joint. There's more than one way to skin a cat, okay? Some of the other instructors, some of you out there are gonna do this a little bit different, but this is the baseline of it, okay? Like I said, because we had a lot of kids come from far away to weld comp and they really struggled on this. And some things I'll point out on my own because we're not robots, right? I noticed when I'm filling this up, that was a little low. So if you look right here, we got a little low spot right here, okay? Always be getting better, all right? All right, everyone, so that's your basic open root weld. A few little things in there I would have changed. I wanted to highlight for you the little low spot there caused by my fill. My fill was a little low, so hopefully you see that and you, uh, you correct that yourself. And I'm going to do the same thing the next time. If you want to come show me how it's done, go to applyweld.com.